Welcome to the Word on Wednesday podcast for November 4. My name is John Mason. Thank you for joining us. The Word on Wednesday is a short midweek ministry to comfort and strengthen hearts and minds from the Scriptures. It would be great to have your subscription to receive the weekly updates. Now as we begin today's reflection, Catherine Jacob will bring us a Bible reading. A reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 3 through 12. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In his book, Have No Fear, Dr. John Lennox, Emeritus Professor of Mathematics, Oxford University, comments, The pressure to silence the public witness of Christians is very real. Indeed, in many parts of the world, the secular and religious opposition has intensified to the extent that, particularly in the West, the dominant attitude is that religion is a private business and should be kept that way. As a result, many Christians have been effectively silenced. They may well continue to go to church, but their witness has long ceased because of fear and pressure. There's nothing new in this. Eight years ago, Dr. Angela Merkel, the German Chancellor, observed that Christians are the most persecuted religion in the world. Yet for the most part, the Western world remains either ignorant or silent implying either a desire not to get involved or a disinterest in matters of justice towards Christians. And yet, just last week, three people attending a church in Nice, France, were killed for their Christian association. Furthermore, if we look beyond the Western news outlets, we learn of ongoing cruelty perpetrated against God's people by Islamist extremists in Nigeria and in the Central Africa Republic. Many of Jesus' early followers suffered persecution and death for their commitment to him as the Messiah. Indeed, under Nero, such were the atrocities perpetrated against God's people that according to the Roman historian Tacitus, even many in the wider Roman society took pity on them. And Tacitus was no supporter of Christians. Persecution can take many forms. There's the more obvious form of physical hardship, torture, imprisonment, death. But there are more subtle forms. Mocking, cynicism, personal rejection. Jesus anticipated the opposition and persecution his followers would experience. He not only warned them of it, but he said, interestingly, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This double beatitude forms the conclusion of Jesus' beatitudes or eight blessings that we read in Matthew chapter 5. What a note on which to finish. Suffering and persecution. Indeed, we might feel uneasy, if 
for in one way they are the most searching of all the Beatitudes. If we never experience some kind of mocking or rejection for our faith, just how much of a follower are we? Now it's important to notice what Jesus is not saying. He is not saying, blessed are those who are persecuted because they are difficult or awkward people, or because they are religious fanatics. No, Jesus restricts the blessing to those who suffer persecution because of righteousness, people who are determined to honour Jesus. It's significant that Jesus calls for a commitment to righteousness, for this is something that pleases a holy and righteous God. Martin Luther, who himself faced persecution and threat of death, observed, The command to you is not to crawl into a corner or into the desert, but to run out, if that is where we have been, and to offer our hands, our feet, and our whole body, and to wager everything we have and can do. He continues, What is required is a hunger and thirst for righteousness that can never be curbed or stopped or sated, one that looks for nothing and cares for nothing except the accomplishment and maintenance of the right, despising everything that hinders this end. If you cannot make the world completely pious, then do what you can, he said. It's only when we can sit light to the things of this world and do all that we can to serve the righteousness of a righteous God that we will receive the blessing of joy of which Jesus speaks. John Stott commented, Commitment to Jesus Christ means allegiance to the suffering Christ, and it's therefore not at all surprising that we should be called upon to suffer. In fact, it is a joy and a token of His grace. Who then are truly blessed? In his Beatitudes, Jesus is saying that he expects his followers to undergo radical changes. Instead of feeling proud of your relationship with God, understand your spiritual bankruptcy, he says. Instead of being indifferent towards unbelievers, mourn for a world that rejects the reality of a transcendent, righteous God. Be prepared to walk the path of humility and service. Hunger for truth and righteousness. Show mercy, pursue purity, work for peace. Reckon on the reality that life won't always be easy for you as one of my people, Jesus is saying. But stay with me. It will be worth every bit of it. Towards the end of his book, Have No Fear, one of the questions John Lennox asks is this. What do you really think a Christian is? It means being a follower of Jesus as Lord. And that means being prepared to do as he says. One of those things is to go into all the world and share the message that has been shared with you. You may have heard the oft-told story of Winston Churchill's speech at his old school when he was at the height of his powers. One account reports that he pulled the proverbial cigar from his mouth and said, Boys, Never give up. Never, ever give up. Despite potential opposition, we should never give up honouring the Lord Jesus in our lives. Nor should we stop praying. Nor should we stop using opportunities to introduce others to Him. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We praise you, Heavenly Father, that you join together all your people in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Catherine Jacob will now lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Andrew Pearson will now lead us in further prayer. A prayer for all in authority. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly pray you to bless all who hold positions of authority and public office in every land, so that all things, especially in these uncertain times, may be ordered in wisdom, righteousness, and peace, to the honor of your holy name and the good of your church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for everyone in need. O God, creator and preserver of all people, we humbly pray for all sorts and conditions of men and women, that you would be pleased to make your way known to them, your saving power among all nations. We commend to your fatherly goodness all who are in any way afflicted or distressed with any kind of sickness or sorrow, anxiety or need. Lord, we particularly pray for your comfort for those who are grieved by the loss of loved ones at this time. We pray for the ongoing research into a vaccine and cure for COVID-19. We also pray for the many who are out of work. Give wisdom and compassion to leaders, enabling them to facilitate an effective economic recovery, and so provide opportunity for work for everyone. Lord, we also pray for those who are in physical, mental, or emotional danger at this time. Father, may it please you to comfort and relieve them according to their needs, giving them patience in their sufferings, and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. All this we ask for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Lord God, you know us to be set in the midst of so many great dangers that by reason of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Grant us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. People involved in today's podcast are John Mason, speaker and writer, Andrew Pearson, the Dean and Senior Minister of the Cathedral Church of the Advent, Birmingham, Alabama, Catherine Jacob, a member of the Cathedral Ministry Team, and music is from the Cathedral, under the direction of Dr. Frederick Teardew and Zachary Hicks. Prayers are drawn from an Australian prayer book, 1978, and the Bible readings are from the New Revised Standard Version. Please let us know if you have a question or a comment about this podcast. We'd love to hear from you.